I got hurt like years ago. Now I'm disabled. That's oh, yeah? kind of one of the most like heartbreaking things because like I can't ever work like a normal job again. For my homeboys, they got uh, they were shot and killed because of me. You know, I wish I could have them back. I'm about well, to crack I'm a beer right wait. now. Mother, I was waiting. Cheers to drink a beer. I said that he drinks and smokes too much. My sister, the only one I could really talk to for years, didn't really care about me. She was one to give me up the CPS, Child Protective, uh, services. Child Protective services. My sister, when she was uh, 10 years old, she had to have a liver transplant. That was pretty heartbreaking for me because I didn't know her health, what, she, what was happening with her. She's good though. She's almost 20 and she's been good since. The most heartbreaking thing I've ever experienced is me breaking up with my girlfriend and her calling me like a bit and stuff like that then i basically got sent to a mental hospital hey don't end up like my last girlfriend trust me trust me trust me come on we we got you come on i got you come on hey like if you want to like talk about some shit like talk to me all right i'm fine with that shit dang you're gonna make me cry shut up tj i was gonna say love but i thought that was a bit cheesy my father was madly in love with my mother and my mother died when i was 12 and he, then he went completely insane oh that was the first family member i had on that was the last time i've cried i mean that's willow for 10 years now. Hardcore. What are you, Batman? That was probably when uh, my wife betrayed me and cheated on me. It was somebody that she knew from high school for a long time. I haven't really found anybody else, but I think I've been uh, pretty much healed from it. It's weird because I miss her, but then again, I'm like, I gotta move on. Probably losing my dad. It was like a heart attack. Yeah, I actually found him. <laughs> I've had a lot of bad things happen to me. <laughs> Luckily, I'm an artist, so like, like I can draw, but I can't like work for long periods of time without being in pain. And I'm like laying down literally right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Can you not walk? I can't stand Say for what? long periods of time. It's not true with me asking, but what happened to you? I was working at like, Walmart actually, and I like I had an injury at work, and I like smacked the back of my head, and then I got a concussion, herniated disc. They like paid for some of my physical therapy and then stopped paying for it. I've been dealing with it ever since then. So now but it's I like. I have to deal with that for life, I guess. Like five years. And it's still, it. it's like, now I have issues with my ribs and I have short leg because it's all like tense in like the right side of my body. So it like it's pulling my leg up and my hip is twisted as well. So I have to keep going back to the chiropractor and having to like put my hip back in place, put my ribs back in place. But it's not like staying that way is the problem now. I'll tell you what, what how I'm Good. doing right now. I'm honestly, doing better since I met her. Because now my medicine makes me hate everyone and my medicine makes me angry as fuck. Well, if you want to answer my question, I'm doing I'm doing better because I met her. You jerk off! <laughs> Wait, did you say bad or better? Better. Oh. Like, back in 2012, my older brother uh, accidentally overdosed and died. That was pretty heartbreaking because, you know, you, didn't, you don't really expect it to happen. And, like, he wasn't even, like, a druggie or nothing. He used to ride, like, BMX, and he was very fit, and he needed pills to help him, like, like muscle relaxers and stuff like that. He fell asleep, and he had an asthma attack in his sleep, and he couldn't wake up because of the pills that he had taken prior to falling asleep. I have many. Most of them are. People that I truly cherish, that I didn't get to spend a lot of time with dies, or hurting someone that I really did care for, and not being able to talk to them again because what I did was wrong. So basically, I'm a softy about everything. Probably this time I got really pissed at my mom and I said, go f die and she started crying that was doesn't feel good the people watching don't insult your mom you're gonna get no matter how pissed you're don't insult your mom ever so you die instead only a small percentage of people who watch my videos are actually subscribed so if you end up liking this video consider subscribing you take everything like a joke you laugh through the pain the pain is always going to come in harshly you have to laugh through it you have to push through it you have to be the world war one soldier pushing through the trenches try your hardest to be yourself because you are going to be the only person that makes you happy losing a friend or family uh there's a pokemon behind you by the way it's all on finding your own way to healthingly cope like for me sometimes the way i cope is actually throwing my own throwing myself into a panic attack just to help me feel better but it's not a real panic attack it's like a pseudo panic attack so there's no actual like mental effect on it it's just making my body go through the feeling and then coming back out of it and it makes me feel better but you know to other people that's not healthy my nerve is basically getting pinched by one of my discs in my spine every time i 
I'd go, they would be like, here's like um, five, like 800 milligrams of uh, Tylenol, or they used to give me uh, Vicodin. Like, it was hurting so bad. But muscle relaxers, they used to give me too, which were really helpful and not as, like, damaging. But then they stopped giving those out too. And I was like, okay, so now what am I supposed to do? Just be in pain? Because, like, if I, if I was doing this by myself in my bed, right? Which I am, technically. But if I'm just laying here, I'm just going to end up getting sad because I'm going to start thinking about, like, everything that's wrong. But if I'm in here and I'm laying here, <laughs> like Deadpool just shows up, you know? I may not be an ideal person to people, but if I know I die, I die knowing I made an impact on someone's heart. At least making someone smile before I die warms my heart. It makes me happy enough to pass. And all I want is peace and happiness in this world from the ones that I love. There's nothing wrong. My mom didn't do anything. She was just mad. I haven't called her in months. I haven't texted her. I I don't even want to call her my sister anymore. <laughs> Literally to clear the air, I was holding that in. I was like, oh, this got dark. Come on. I want to clear the room real quick. Me getting kicked out of my school and uh, you know, losing most of my childhood because I was forced to stay inside because they wanted me to take that uh, pills because we said no. The school, they wouldn't allow me to come back to the actual like public school unless I was to take the medicine. It was like a, for something for ADHD. My very best friend that I grew up with had sex. My girlfriend had sex with my very best friend. Probably being told that they don't love me. In order to find the true love you have to understand that that probably doesn't really exist just pessimistic mood but um and, and like anxiety sometimes i like get sick before like hang out with somebody because like i'm so anxious you know so it's like this way is a lot nicer because there are still people to talk to but it's like i don't have to go anywhere i mean f for me like i worked in retail for like probably 10 years i don't know that kind of helped me get over my social anxiety because i had to talk to people you know like i didn't have a choice it's quite tragic because there was a lot going Going on for me at the time and that was kind of like the last straw where my life really kind of imploded and kind of caved in on itself recollecting on a lot of bad sh I haven't been the greatest person in my past. Things even before that that I did that I can't just blame on something like my mental illness or just poor choices. I kind of felt like those decisions were tied to something within me that was like just begging to be let out. And I don't want to feel like that because, you know, that eats away at me every day. You know, that's in the past, you know, now that can't affect you in any way. Sure, mentally. But if you just look at them as words like, oh, that's just a sentence now, you know, it's nothing more than that. Try to give everybody a chance. Don't look at somebody and you know a judge off immediately okay mr so. miyagi there's just me who was sarcastic and there's just him who's like do not judge those by light <laughs> whenever someone eats my food the worst experience anyone can ever experience it was really like a horror movie as it was unraveling because it got more and more and more frequent and it wasn't like it happened all of a sudden he was a cancer survivor it was three times before the final diagnosis where they had to remove parts of his organs but it wasn't enough to save him and he went terminal just don't limit yourself because the only person that can prevent you from being happy is yourself that's straight up facts depression or even if you have an injury you can choose to lay in bed and cry or you can choose to like do something that makes you happy and even if you want to just lay there it's just it's better not to because as drake said yolo <laughs> don't be afraid to cut people out of your life who are a toxic influence even if it's your, your family because there's always people out in the world who are willing to help and willing to be a positive influence in your life and keep them around. Curse the ones you love. He always would put on a smile for us, but there was no hope for him to live. You know, I remember his last words to me and my brother. This was the day before he died because on the day he died, he wasn't strong enough to speak. We came to his room. He wasn't in a hospital when he died. He didn't want to die in a hospital. He wanted to die in his home surrounded by loved ones, which is what he got. His final words to me and my brother were, you know, I walked up to him and gave him a hug and then he grabbed me by he grabbed me like you know caught me by the arm then pulled me back and he said be good be good and he when he did this he couldn't open his eyes he didn't open his eyes to do it he just said be good be good everyone deserves forgiveness or if they ask for forgiveness you should always forgive them the way i was raised you can have a bad reputation or people hate a lot of people hate you but as long as you don't hurt me i'm going to just treat you the same the reason why i stuck around with this guy because 
I could tell deep down he really wanted help. No one liked them. There was honestly no way out that I wanted to help this guy because no one else would. So that's what I did. Heartbroken that I couldn't help this man no matter what I did. I just felt like he needed love because no one everyone needed it, but it's unfortunate I couldn't do anything and that's what hurts. I would say the disconnection from my family because I am not with them currently so I don't really talk to them as much, especially with my mom. Uh, she, she got a job in Texas and I didn't want to go so I, I ended up staying here. I'm still rethinking that. It was somewhat not poetic but interesting because the very next person I bumped into was, now I'm not religious myself but my grandfather was and it was actually the priest. He had actually came in to uh, pray with my grandfather it hurts a lot more because like I haven't gotten over it I, I don't think I've like you never get over stuff like that can't bring myself to visit his grave because it's just so traumatizing me to do so you know it was only recently where my mother his daughter talked to me and uh, stopped me from believing this but for like the past seven years I thought I failed him because his last words were like be good but I felt like I wasn't good because of my mental health crisis but my mother she said no you have been good because what happened and what you did then wasn't you you were sick at the time and you know that that meant a lot to me that that meant the world to me what she said there because i think she was the only person that could really put that to rest so that was good that was a good thing that happened my parents break up or their divorce the one thing i want in life really is for both of them to get back together and still love each other but i know that can never happen because they're both you know married right now i have to go to both sides and i have to show the same affection that i have for each other but they have such different personalities it's kind of hard to become my true self when i want them to be happy but i can't really make myself be happy me being depressed suddenly without even a reason i don't even know why you get lonely you get sad you get you just don't know why yeah school bus full of a bunch of ESC kids diving off a cliff into 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 nothing no just dead just death that's it lights out when my brother died for me it takes time to heal and don't rush it i guess and make sure you have a good support group that's when it really kind of hit me because i went to my friends i said my grandfather died and they're like oh gosh we're so sorry we're so sorry yuzu and then then they go back to right, right where we were talking about it's like you don't care you don't care that my grandfather's dead like some friends you guys are so you know, I stopped talking to them. It was that buildup of just like me being an idiot, people not liking me, me not feeling welcome. It was so much and it just broke me. I didn't feel there was any meaning to my life. And then it got even worse when I went into crisis mode. They are autistic and stuff like that. And sometimes it's a bit difficult with people with autism because negatives stick on way longer than positives in a lot of cases, which means if I were to point out something, they would probably like ghost me for a while just for context. I am actually, I used to be a tutor for children with mental disorders. It happened on Valentine's. We were hanging out for a little bit and then she left. She told me that she had to go somewhere and I said sure. And I waited almost four to five hours and she never came back. I had a kidney stone one time. That was very painful. It didn't compare. Heartbreak is worse. I've learned uh, plenty of advice, but certainly a case by case basis. Like um, the, actually the best piece of advice that I can give to any anyone who's struggling is first up you're not alone but second up the only person that can truly help yourself that can make a change inside that can fix things is you treat yourself as though you were someone that you're responsible for taking care of and you care about deep i that's agree very Peterson much quote. with that you're gonna say it, that's yeah Jordan the Peterson jordan quote, Peterson no. quote. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah it's kind of indicative of this sense where people really don't it's it's not that they don't respect themselves it's that they don't feel like they should be responsible for themselves you don't have to like yourself you just you just have to um act like you're responsible for yourself i think that's very well said i wanted to get with her but i stopped myself because i need to focus on my studies and i thought she deserved better i understood what type of person i was and what i would turn into in the long run and she had a future and i didn't want to drag her down to my depths i was dealing with the anxiety and self-worth issues by playing this game i originally played this so i could help deal with my anxiety but the main problem was i started playing this and it was just like oh hello my people yeah and everyone started like going crazy and was just like oh this guy like he's one of us and it didn't help my anxiety at all i didn't get to test my anxiety i just felt like i was playing team fortress 2 again find the knowledge that other people have stumbled across the basic idea is that 
don't just sit in your room in your own echo chamber. You gotta go experience not quite conflict, but generally life. I do have an art Instagram if you would like to check it out. At ramen doodles, but the doodles it has three O's. Thumbs up from Darth Vader. <laughs>